So, tonight, we are all very, very fortunate because we are all here together. And even though I know there's a shortage of oxygen in this room, <laughs> it's a small price to pay to be able to go to Vrindavan. How often in your daily life, in your weekly life, in your work life and so forth, how often do you get to sit and meditate deeply on Krishna and his beautiful pastimes? I think we will all have to say it's a very rare occasion. So, before starting this beautiful Leela, this morning I was thinking about something. I was thinking that it's my understanding that Krishna consciousness is supposed to be only fun. And that ordinary material life isn't meant to be fun. It's meant to have, as we heard, uh, pinches and struggles and difficulties inbuilt within it. But our problem is that we see the other way around. We see that spiritual life is, is sometimes dry and difficult and part of us is looking towards the fact that material life is very enthralling and absorbing and a source of our happiness. And therefore there's a reversal that's necessary to shift from here to here. So the question may be raised how to do that. And there are a couple of answers that are relevant. And one of them is to observe and hear about the difficulties and the miseries that go on in this world. If you see them for yourself, then you see the negative side of life. But the other one, the other part of the answer is that you must hear about what it's like in the spiritual realm. Or else you'll just be a negative person, a sour person, an unhappy person, an insecure person, or a miserable person. But as we hear about Krishna and the wonderful, beautiful way he does things, this is part of changing our way of thinking so that we can transcend and seriously imbibe them or as we heard about, we can attain some absorption. So this morning I was chanting my rounds in my room at the cottage. And so I could concentrate. I had the light off. So the room was dim and dark. And I was chanting and chanting and chanting. And then all of a sudden I noticed that the curtain on the window was glowing. Not the full curtain, but around the curtain, it was glowing. And I looked at this for a moment, and I thought, what does that mean? And it means something very simple. It means that the sun has risen outside. Before the sun rose, the whole room was dark with no disturbing elements. But as soon as the sun rose, there was a glow from the other side of the curtain, from outside the curtain. And suddenly I felt a need to remove the curtain and let the sun come in. So this is what hearing Krishna's pastimes is meant to do. It's, to me, it's meant to increase the rise of Krishna in our consciousness, the sun of Krishna. As Srila Prabhupada said, Godhead Krishna is sun and material life Maya is darkness. And where there is sun, there is no darkness. So we come together like this in this wonderful way to illuminate our consciousness with the beauty of the wonderful pastimes of Krishna, especially in Vrindavan. And we should know 
without any misunderstanding that even the most sad and most uh, dangerous or the most miserable moment that we see in our eyes that is being experienced by the residents of Vrindavan is actually a transformation of ecstasy. It's another form of bliss that they share intimately in their relationship with Krishna. And nothing blocks them from the pure interrelationship with Krishna, free-flowing. They have no curtain to remove like we do. So let's hear about that. Now please try to hear and enter into the wonderful pastime of Govardhan Leela. Here, Krishna is acting like an innocent young boy, but internally, he wants to make Indra very angry. So please listen. One day during the month of Ashvin, when all the people outside of Braj were happily celebrating religious festivals, deciding that this was the best time to perform their annual Indra Yagya, Nanda Maharaj, Krishna's father, and all his community had temporarily left their homes in Nandagram and taken up residence in the village of the Yagyak Brahmanas in order to oversee the various elaborate preparations that were required. Some people were busy collecting huge stocks of rice and ghee while others were busy arranging for large quantities of wood which would be required by the sacrificial fires. And huge piles of channa and wheat were being ground into flour. Everyone was so busy. And so many other activities were taking place. Everyone was busy preparing to cook so many preparations. Ananda Maharaj was walking around here and there, overseeing everything. At sunset, when Krishna and Balaram returned from cow herding with their friends, Krishna noted the elaborate preparations that had been going on now for many days. And he became quite curious. He wanted to find out exactly what was taking place. Although he is present in everyone's heart as the super soul within the heart, he approached his father and offered his respects with folded hands, just like an innocent young boy. Oh, Baba, what is happening? Everyone is so busy. It seems like a big event is about to take place. <laughs> Nanda looked at his son. And he replied, Yes, Lala, a big yagya is going to be conducted. Krishna asked, Baba, what yagya? While Krishna was asking so many more questions, his father and the cowherd men thought that he was way too small to understand the intricate matters involved. And so they just remained silent. 
Krishna looked at his father and he said, Baba, great souls like you, you, you are like a, you're a sadhu. And so you should see everybody equally. And sadhus never, never, never keep secrets. Besides, Baba, I am your son. So please explain everything to me. I am very, 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 very interested. <laughs> After speaking so maturely, Krishna sat down next to his father and looked up at him. And Nanda Baba lovingly picked up Krishna and placed him on his lap. Baba, are you doing this yajna because it is in the Vedas? Or are you doing it because other people do it? <laughs> Beaming at his son, Nanda tried his best to explain. Lala, he said, although this ceremony is a popular custom, <coughs> yet it is a feature of cowherd life and it is proper. So we consider it Vedic. And in our family, this Indra Yajna has been performed for many, many, many generations. You see, Indra Dev is the king of all the Devas. And the clouds are controlled by him. There his personal representatives. Now, rain comes from the clouds. And Indra is the lord of the clouds. So he is the giver of rain. As cow herders, our wealth is our cows who live on the grass who need the rain to grow. Since Indradev gives us that rain, we use all the items which he kindly provided for us, like our grains, our milk, our ghee, and all other products to perform his yajna. Hearing this explanation, Krishna said, Baba, if someone does not do the Indra Yajna, what will happen? Nanda Baba replied, Oh son, if this worship is not there, there will be no rain. No trees will grow. No grass will grow. If someone gives up their worship out of fear or pride or envy, there will be no good fortune for them. And that is why, for the benefit of our cows and ourselves, every year, we carefully observe this Indra Yajna. When Krishna heard these bitter words from his father, he felt very unhappy within. He did not like to see his own relatives and community placing such full faith in Indra. At heart, he was somewhat displeased with the Devata king. 
he was thinking. All the demigods, including Brahma and Shiva, worship me with great earnestness. And yet, my father and followers have chosen to place their faith and devotion in Indra. And then he thought, my family members are far, far, far superior to Indra. So she, he should have refused to accept this worship. And because he has not done so, he has become extremely proud. Krishna wanted to break apart the mountain of pride in Indra's heart and make him angry. And to do that, he spoke many clever words to convince Nanda Maharaj that he should not perform the yajna. Krishna now speaks. <clears throat> Everyone sat around listening intently to what he was going to say. Krishna was now going to give his father faulty logic in order to prove that work and not Indra was the highest. <coughs> Baba, better than Deva's is our work because everything happens as a result of our work. We receive our results according to the work that we do. There is no place for Indra in that. Nanda Baba said, no Lala, work is actually inert. There must be a master to give the reward of our work. Krishna said, You say that Indra accepts our worship. Have you ever seen him, Baba? Has he ever come here to accept the offerings you make? Where does he live, Baba? Nanda replied, <laughs> He lives in the heavenly planet. Krishna said, Baba, someone who lives in the heavenly planets will not come here to accept offerings from us. Baba, he's a big, 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 big devata. Why would he accept big offerings from us little gopas? And then Krishna changed his argument and he said, Baba, you know that everything happens According to nature, it's nature that is supreme. Nanda responded, No, no, Lala, no, Lala. There is a supreme master who inspires everyone to act. Krishna said, Baba, you say that Indra is that master who makes the rain. But rain falls everywhere on the land on the ocean, and on the mountains. Did they do puja, Baba? And, and what about when there's too much rain? When there's a dangerous flood? Is that the mercy of Indra Dev? Baba, rain comes from the Rajagun. It has nothing to do with Indra. We should worship nature. Nanda said, No son, when performing yagyas, there must be a devata to accept the offerings. Krishna replied, Since we are cow herders, we are dependent on the land. 
So we should worship Giriraj. Because Giriraj, the hill of mountain of Giriraj, provides us with all the grass and all the rivers and all the places to pasture our cows. We should worship Giriraj and the cows and the Brahmanas. This is our livelihood. Giriraj can become our big devata. Oh, Baba, I like this puja very much. It will make me very, very happy. If you want, you can do this. I like this very much. Nanda Maharaj said, Lala, to satisfy you, we will do a second yagya for Giriraj. No, Baba, don't delay. Use everything that has been prepared for Indra and satisfy Giriraj instead. Now, Krishna knew that his arguments were not being accepted because the cowherd men were too intelligent. So he finally took out his ultimate weapon, which was, please do it for me. <laughs> he knew that would work. So Nanda and the cowherd men discussed this new plan from many different angles very carefully and thoughtfully. Some of them were concerned that Indra might become displeased. But it was their nature to please Krishna. So whatever he wanted, they were going to do it. Krishna said, Oh Baba, you are peaceful and respected by everyone. You should have faith in my words, for they will remove all danger. Just worship Giriraj, with all the things collected for Indra. Nanda said, Baba, Lala, how can we perform this puja? Prepare an ocean of yogurt, milk, and fresh butter. Collect full pots of milk and ghee. Cook tasty food and fancy cakes. You should please everyone by making a mountain of rice and pour ghee all over it. And then surround it all around with food. Perform the puja and offerings to Giriraj and worship him. And then you should feed everyone, right down to the dogs and the dog eaters. Everyone should be satisfied. But do not offer anything to Indra. <laughs> and after this wonderful feast, decorate yourselves nicely and happily circumnambulate Govardhan Hill. And soon, Soon, Giriraj will fulfill all your desires. After hearing Krishna's words, Nanda and the leading men accepted his proposal. This, of course, would make Indra extremely angry. When the new moon day Amavasya arrived, the residents of Vrindavan performed Diwali. And the next day, the day after Diwali, they observed the festival that Krishna had described to them. First, they decorated all Govardhan's many peaks 
with colorful, bright flags and canopies and banners. And to initiate the puja, Nanda Maharaj brought all the necessary items from his house. The tumultuous sound of excitement, music, and singing and talking resonated throughout Vraj. And this transcendental sound, it even resonated up to Swagaloka, where it caused great pain to Indra's ears. This Giriraj Yagya was to be celebrated all over Braj, and therefore lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of people came from the different villages in the Braj region. And everybody arrived on their bullock carts, piled high with all kinds of preparations to offer to Giriraj. Just imagine, so much noise. And people were lifting the pots off their carts, and sometimes they dropped them, and they slipped, and everything was just a chaotic excitement. Every household had cooked enormous amounts of rice, sweets, and other items. And they placed them here and there, all around the hill. From early in the morning, they had been cooking, and bringing offerings, and cooking, and bringing offerings, and cooking, and bringing offerings. And all of them, everybody there, had the same thought in their mind. We must do whatever is pleasing to Krishna. At an auspicious time, by Krishna's request, Nanda Maharaj went to a place known as Mukara Vinda at Manasi Ganga. He went there to do the formal puja. And he made an statement there, saying that to everyone, that this yagya was exclusively for Giriraj. That includes the cows, of course, and the brahmanas. And from now on, he said, there would be no more yagyas for Indra. Nanda called the Brahmins to recite the Samaved. And Tilak was placed on Giriraj. And the puja began. He was bathed in milk from everyone's homes. And then Nanda said, that since Giriraj is the biggest devata, the biggest devata, everyone must offer their pranams and beg for his protection and seek his blessings. Then he ordered that the boga should be offered to him. And vast numbers, huge numbers of pots full of honey and ghee and milk and dahi were added to the large array of food that had already been placed all around Giriraj. When this mountain with many peaks, then this mountain was created out of rice, piling up the rice that had also many peaks. And then it was covered in ghee, poured over the top, so much ghee. Nobody thought of any budget. Everybody gave everything they had. Everyone was saving their milk products because it's only so much milk you can get from the cows in one day. So they'd been saving and saving and cooking and cooking and they just gave everything. And so with great enthusiasm, a second hill was created. And it looked like golden Mount Kailash, shimmering under a cover of rain. Then fruits and flowers were placed all around this mountain of rice, and multicolored cakes were stuck on the side. And all around the base, they put pots of sabji and, and dal and so forth. And then they put fragrant cardamom and cloves and camphor everywhere. Seeing this remarkable sight, 
Krishna smiled happily and he told his father, Baba, now offer this boga to Giriraj. The Brajabhasis did whatever Krishna requested. Then nothing could be heard in Vrindavan except prayers and Vedic hymns. And auspicious vibrations of musical instruments resounded above in the sky. While this offering was being made, a gigantic form glowing like thousands of suns suddenly became visible from behind the hill, above the hill. To remove the doubts of the cowherd men, Krishna assumed this four-armed form of the Devata standing on top of the hill. So Krishna was standing there as a little boy and this enormous form appeared on top of Govardhan Hill. This is the form of Giriraj who will accept all their offerings. Seeing this divine form, young Bala Krishna, he said, Oh, great Devata, who are you? And that divine personality replied, O oh, little boy, I am Govardhan, and I have come, I have come to accept all your offerings. Everyone was astonished and excited. There was such a noise of tumult and excitement. And Krishna quieted them all. And he asked. He pointed. Actually, he pointed and he said to them, Look, Govardhan, the best of all mountains, has now manifest before you all as a brilliantly effulgent person. Look closely. This hill has appeared personally to fulfill all your desires. He's appeared before you to fulfill your desires. Now, offer your respects to him. Then both Krishna and all the people of Vrindavan bowed down to the personified form of Govardhan. In effect, Krishna was offering obeisances to himself. <laughs> then Giriraj told them all something wonderful. He looked at them all with a very smiling face and he said, I am not like other Devatas. I do not remain distant from you. Now look, I will eat everything that you have given me. Saying this, this gigantic form stretched out to take some food and he quickly consumed huge quantities of food and as he ate his form grew bigger and bigger and bigger and he extended his arm this way and that way and he took mouthful after mouthful after mouthful of the food and the Brajavasis gazed in wonder he devoured piles of rice with his right hand and with his left hand he wiggled his little finger of his left hand at Indra. 
and continued eating and wiggled his finger at Indra. He's saying, you are as inconsequential as the tip of my little finger on my left hand. <laughs> he was mocking him. <laughs> when he finished, there was nothing left. Everything had been eaten. And then he started drawing on the lakes and the ponds and the rivers until he depleted them all. By joyfully worshipping Govardhan Hill, which we all have an opportunity to do, by joyfully worshipping Govardhan Hill, the Rajabhasis realized that Govardhan is a person. And then that great form spoke again. He said, I am very pleased that you have all worshipped me so nicely. Go back to your homes and do not fear Indra. I will protect you. You see, there was still some fear in some of the Brajabasi's hearts. So Giriraj assured them, don't be afraid. You have given me everything. Don't be afraid. And then they offered Arti to Giriraj and this mysterious giant figure suddenly disappeared. Krishna told his father, Baba, you saw how Giriraj ate all the offerings meant for Indra. Yes? <laughs> he now has great power. He will personally tear apart anyone who dishonors him. And then all the offerings mysteriously appeared where they were before. And when the worship was complete, everyone was fed sumptuously and given wonderful gifts. And now it was time to do Govardhan Prikrama. So please hear about this wonderful event. In front, at the very front of this large Prikrama, there were very skillful musicians who were playing different instruments and they were leading the way. And behind them came all the Brahmanas who were riding in bullock carts and chanting all the mantras from the Vedas. And then, behind them, came all the cowherd boys. They all had their sticks and they were fearlessly driving the cows forward. And in the midst of all those boys was Krishna. His garments glittered like shimmering gold. He had a rope in his hand and he was a stick in the other hand which he playfully tossed in the air and he'd catch it and he would run after any stray calves or cows and bring them back and catch them and bring them back with the team. And playing sublime melodies on his bamboo flute, laughing and joking with Balaram and his friends. Then just behind the boys, was Nanda Maharaj and all the men. And they walked along very happily and peacefully, wearing sweet-smelling garlands and smiling in great satisfaction, all the leading men of Vrindavan. And then came another group of musicians who were playing venas and flutes. And then came singers and dancers who were moving in rows this way and that way behind each other. This was a super wonderful procession, procession, unlike anything that we can ever imagine seeing here in this world. And then came the gopis, 
the ladies of brudge, their faces glowing with happiness, riding on bullock carts, singing loudly the pastimes of Krishna. Do you know that wherever they were and wherever they went, Wherever they were and wherever he went, quickly or slowly, the eyes of every one of them followed Krishna. Where is he? Where is he? What is he doing? Where is Krishna? As if they were puppets being moved on strings. They all talked excitedly amongst themselves as they performed this prikrama. And when with great joy they completed the task, when they completed their prikram, they spent the night there. The great love for Krishna that manifest during this Govardhan Yajna was beyond the power of even the Devatas to describe. Everyone was astonished. Only Indra was great, greatly unhappy. He withered and was emaciated with displeasure. He stopped my yajna. This was the only thought. He stopped my yajna. And while proudly contemplating this, he stopped my yajna. He became more and more and more overcome with anger. Meanwhile, anyone, including all of yourselves and myself also, who simply hears or chants about the glories of Giri Govardhan, which are inconceivable to ordinary people, anyone who hears and chants those glories will be delivered from all calamities. Haribo! Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Dhamma Hare Dhamma 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 Hare Hare. Everyone, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Dham Hare Dham Dham Hare Dham Hare Hare Everyone chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare
Hardy Krishna, Hardy Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hardy, Hardy, Hardy Dhamma, Hardy Dhamma. Dhamma Dhamma Hade 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 Krishna Hade Krishna 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 Krishna, Krishna, Hade, 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 Dhamma, Hade, Dhamma, 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 Hade, Hade. Hare Krishna 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 Krishna, Hade, 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 Dhamma, Hade, Dhamma, Dhamma, Dhamma. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Dama Dama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Everybody Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dama, Hare Dama, Dama Dama, Hare Hare.